I think women's snowboarding has really developed in the last couple of years and it's really great to see like the tricks are so much better. Uh, I think what I've heard people like to watch the women's snowboarding in contest because they never know who's gonna still win it because everybody is really pushing it and they're on the same level. There's like one or two that are definitely like sticking out but it's not like a, you just never know who's gonna win the contest and I think that's really fun to see but nowadays with the big competitions like X Games and the Aaron Styles and stuff it's always just on invite and uh, women just got added to it and they're quite limited with the spots it's maybe like six or eight spots for women and I think that's pretty unfair nowadays because we have grown so much there's like at least 10-15 women that should be able to ride those contests and, and go through a qualifying system like the guys are doing these days and I think that would even help push the sport more for women so they have a chance they have also a chance to show their face that they're the new up-and-coming girls around in the scene and that will make it like grow even more and I feel like it's a pity that we don't get to have the qualification rounds anymore in the in the really major contest we used to have that back in the day and I feel like the event should bring that back uh, companies should push women snowboarding more again we, we had, there was a downfall and yeah, the whole industry everything went down and a lot of the budgets were cut on the women's side because of course the guys are bigger in the scene of extreme sports but I feel the growth is laying on the women's side and then if you take it away from marketing and pushing women in general yeah it's always going to stay small so I'd like to see more brands focusing on the women's part of it and push it and they can also become legends they also have great stories to tell and yeah hopefully that's going to change in the near future I think the thing I'm most proud of in my snowboard career is be being nominated by a snowboarder magazine in the US to be the best female writer and best video part. I got that after I made the open air web series. Uh, I did it with a friend of mine, we just came up with the ID to just show more what I'm doing. Uh, yeah, on my own rather than just making a video part but like the travel the contest and everything and it's not like I came up with that idea I definitely stole that from uh, Ero Etela and Heike Sorsa I'm always a big fan of them and they start cooking with gas and you could see yeah people wanted to see more than just the, the tricks and I think it's very interesting to show someone's whole story and it was a great success in my eyes that that year the whole season I did some new improving tricks uh, I got to ride a lot of backcountry, which is what I really like to do. Um, still got to ride the competitions, but my focus was really just on having a good time, uh, making videos, showing people that it's about snowboarding. It's not necessarily about just riding contests, just getting that video shot. It's just a general part. Get on your board, do what you love most, and, and get out there. And I'm being rewarded for that. It uh, felt amazing, you know, to be recognized recognize for oh that was a great job and you know we, we think you deserve this award so that's one of the the main things in my career that sticks out and then of course on the contest side um, the X Games I've always won the next Games medal because that was the first competition I would see in the Netherlands on TV um, maybe 15 20 years ago oh yeah 20 <laughs> at least 20 years ago um, and I was like, wow, that competition looks so cool. And I was very American back then. And the first time I ever got invited to X Games, it was a big deal for me. I also uh, flew my brother into Aspen um, because we it was a dream come true. We only ever saw it on TV. We, we live in the Netherlands. We have nothing to do with snowboarding, nothing to do with mountains. And then to stand, on, in my eyes, on the highest platform of competition riding was amazing. And then I always, of course, wanted to win a medal and I struggled every year. I came back to X Games and I would try maybe too hard or I got too nervous and I think I never landed a run in finals there. So once I finally did it in Oslo, in my hometown, in front of my two daughters and my partner, it was just an amazing feeling like to be in, yeah, on home turf and to perform so well 
and finally getting that medal that I've kind of been seeking for so long. Um, yeah, that was definitely also a great feeling. And the rest is just like, there's not too many moments, it's just snowboarding in general, it's something I cannot live without. And it's every day that I get to ride with my friends and have fun is, is what counts for me. My legends when I started snowboarding um, on the women's side were Tara Dakides and Jana Mine. Those girls were really showing a strong aggressive style, which I like. They were not afraid to, to step up. They were always really pushing themselves and that's something I really like to see well in any kind of sport but especially in the sport that I do and yeah I don't like to keep it safe you know I want to push always the limits and it, they were doing that in my eyes they always had the next video parts always looked for that and then of course the forum boys like they look like a good crew uh, back in the day that just had fun together they traveled together everywhere and they were just killing it like rock stars I was just like wow these dudes are sick <laughs> One day I would love to ride with him and a dream coming true, I got to be part of the team, so that was really cool. My favorite spots to ride in the world depends on what I'm gonna ride. For park, I would definitely say Colorado, just because there's so many parks together and when there's some kind of bad weather or an issue, you can go like Keystone or Breckenridge or you can go to Copper Mountain. They all, like their parks are all so good and up to date and shaped every day. There's never a bad day in the park. Um, compared to Europe, the, the shapers sometimes sleep in, I guess. <laughs> the parks are not always shaped as well. But uh, yeah, then of course riding powder. That's one of the more fun things to do. I had a really great time when I went to Jackson. Partly because I get to ride a snowmobile and the terrain is amazing there. You can find so many good spots to build jumps and I think that's my favorite thing to do is be in the backcountry and build jumps and be, uh, yeah, do like freestyle stuff. And then also of course going to Japan just to, to more free ride. You try to do tricks there but it's always hard but in the end it's always just a fun trip. You have so much powder there and you, you can do it night riding, you go up, take the lift, you put in your track and you, you're all hyped with your friends and then take the chairlift back up and you're all covered in snow and, you, and your track is completely gone again and you just, it's like endless days of power. For the Olympics, I've done uh, my things last year was just to try to get the points. Uh, I got my points and my goal was now to focus on new tricks and train harder and not focus too hard on the competitions. So in, in the sense of, of the qualification of Olympics, I've done my international quota. I'm in the, the right ranking to go. Now I just gotta hold on to the ranking. That means I will have to start in a couple of the competitions this year, but I will not have to have any crazy results or anything, which is good. But then for the Netherlands, they have a higher criteria and they wanna see some top six results or something but normally that is not a problem for me and hopefully yeah as soon as I get back on my board I'll be hunting for those spots and I'll be at the Olympics for two uh, two disciplines so I'll go for the big air and the slope style yes the level is definitely getting higher and the girls are pushing it um, it's nice to see the doubles come into the girls slope style runs on the other hand, it's not necessary to do a double to win a slow stop competition, which I think is still nice to see because there's still so many directions of spinning and making it look good and spinning 900s is something I think should just be worked on as well. Um, personally, my goal was of course also to learn some new tricks, but I have to readjust my goal and with my neck I'm going to maybe focus on some other things. Um, I think most girls will push themselves this summer quite a bit on airbags and special training facilities. If it all is going to come out at contest next year will be a question because 
like Anna Gasser, she has her doubles on lock and some of the other girls, but the double backflip will still be scored almost the same as a 720 because it is about how you make it look and the rotation is still the, the same amount. So I don't think it's like a priority for too many girls to, to go too crazy, but more work on your style, make things look good, make it look effortless. I think it's more important. And then, yeah, you have to stay healthy. This is like number one goal. You have to make it to the Olympics and think that will start being in people's minds because you can start a contest and you can do that new trick that you learned, but you gotta realize that you gotta survive that contest to go to the next contest to be able to start in the Olympics to keep your, your point system up. So it, it is a lot more than just riding and having fun when you have like a big goal of going to the Olympics, you gotta have a little strategy. So yeah, it's gonna be a lot coming into play. It'll be fun to see what the girls actually will do this year. <laughs> yes, I have a great little family at home. Uh, my two beautiful daughters, they are three and six. Uh, my six year old one really understands well what I'm doing. Uh, my three-year-old also starts to get it. It was really good that they saw me last year at X Games in Oslo. Uh, they could see the competition themselves. They saw what I was doing and they know that that is my job right now. So they have respect for it. But of course they, they miss me when I'm gone for long periods of time and I miss them as well. But on the other hand it's also a, like a choice of a lifestyle and you know some parents have to work nine to five every day so they don't see too much of their kids growing up in a way neither and this is my choice and it's a choice for myself to stay pro snowboarder and I feel like I'm, I'm doing it well with juggling being a parent and my partner has been really great letting me do what I need to do to stay pro and you need that support um, yeah, from your partner to be able to do it so I think that, that has been my luckiest thing about being a parent is to have a good partner that will stand beside you and let you do your things and yeah hopefully they'll grow up and I get to take them along with me and we can compete together one day <laughs> uh, the girls are not too crazy about action sports they're just crazy in general as kids having a lot of energy and jumping and flipping and doing crazy stuff but they're not like really into snowboarding as I am into snowboarding they they just love playing around and everything of course I'm like pushing them a little bit towards skateboarding and snowboarding because I like to do that but my oldest daughter she she goes to dancing and swimming and I just let them be free whatever they want to do they can do and try to chase their dreams but I feel like it's still too young for them to realize what they really want to do so I just they can do whatever they like and Hopefully one day they'll, they'll follow either my footsteps or not. I just want them to have a great life and we'll just have fun. I think that's my key thing to them and to anyone is have fun in your life, enjoy it and make the best of it. For me, I kind of feel like snowboarding gave me everything that I have in my life. It made me who I am today. Uh, it made me grow up the way I am. Uh, when I started snowboarding I realized uh, it's a sport, uh, it's a lifestyle where people like really receive you with open arms, doesn't matter who you are or what you do, it's, it's a culture, it's a community that like is really open for like, hey let's have fun together, let's go up that mountain and shred down it and it doesn't matter how you do it, which I really like, it's such a creative sport, it lets you be creative. When I was younger I, I was good in tennis. They wanted me to go in the next level top tennis selection. And I was like, they were so stressing me out at such a young age. I think I was seven years old and they're like, oh, you gotta train this hard and you gotta be like that and more of this. And I was just like, whoa, you just took all the fun away from me playing tennis. I quit. I don't care how good I am, I quit. And I think with snowboarding, that's been so much better. Like no one ever told me how to do, how to be, what to do. and. Yeah, that's how I fell in love with the sport and, and the people and of course it has developed now if you really want to ride on a higher level there is better ways of doing it but still there's not really a structure to it and growing up 
with this open creativity around me like made me see the world I got to travel with snowboarding I get to meet new cultures um, meet so many friends from all over the world like my friends are in every country almost that I can think of in the world I can pick up a phone and be like hey dude I'm coming to your your city or your place and you know I know there's gonna be a bed there for me and and the same if people like travel past my place the door is always open and I think that's so nice to you don't feel alone you you have this this group of people around that have the same love for snowboarding and living life um, so yeah it, it gave me everything it, the way I think the the way I act the way I react so it's everything to me <laughs>